So in a sense, we can think of this channel and then the basically the area or the channel under the gate, we can think of it as a distributed resistor, right? Similar to what we have actually tried to illustrate here. So basically, um, we have this transistor and we know that there is a channel here. There are a bunch of like basically free electrons here that their density pretty much depends on this gate voltage. And the moment I have them, it means that now if I actually apply a voltage on the drain, let's keep the source at, at zero. But if I apply a voltage at the drain, then I know that I'm going to have a current because there is a channel of free electrons. Then th those free electrons are, are going to help me to have a current, right? So it's kind of like a resistor because, well, the more voltage I apply here, the more current I'm going to have here. And it's almost a linear relationship, at least in the very beginning, when I actually have a smaller VD. For larger VDs, we're going to see how this thing is going to actually uh, behave. But then for now, we could really see it as some sort of a resistor, right? And this resistor, I can show it with, like, it's a voltage controlled resistor. So it's a variable resistor. So... On one side we have source, on the other side we have drain. Uh, I'm going to show this little arrow here showing that it's a variable resistor. That's the standard symbol for variable resistor. And I'm going to connect this arrow to gate to kind of imply that the resistance of this resistor really uh, depends on the voltage of the gate. Okay. So now if the if VG, the gate voltage, is smaller than the threshold voltage, I know that there's not going to be any channel, therefore my device is going to be off, meaning that it doesn't matter how much voltage I apply to the drain or the source, I'm not going to have a channel, I don't have any channel, so I'm not going to have any current. So my ID is going to be zero, regardless of the value of VD. But if I have gate voltage higher than the threshold voltage, then my transistor is turned on, therefore my ID is greater than zero, and the source drain path may act as a simple resistor. Of course, it's not like perfect resistor. We're going to see exactly how it behaves, but you can imagine that it kind of looks like a resistor or a variable resistor, or to be more uh, precise, a voltage controlled resistor. So for the device that I described with this cross section, with the voltage source connected to the gate, voltage source connected to drain, and uh, the source being connected to zero or to ground, you can see that if I keep the gate voltage constant, meaning that the channel or the uh, the density of free electrons in the channels is not going to change, then well, I'm expecting this to be working like a resistor. So it means that if I start to change drain voltage, the, the voltage source that is connected to the drain, if I start to change it, I'm going to have uh, changes in the current flowing from drain to source, and these changes are going to be pretty much linearly, right? So if I plot ID versus VD, I'm going to have a linear line, and the slope of that line is going to be 1 over R on, right? So this is basically the slope here is equal to 1 over R on. That R on to the negative 1 means that. So what does it mean? It means that I'm going to have basic, and why is it 1 over that? Because it's current versus voltage. If I had voltage versus current, then the slope of this line would have been just R on, the resistance, because of the Ohm's law, okay? Now, on the other hand, I know that if I actually start to increase gate voltage, what happens is that I'm going to have more and more free electrons in the channel. Therefore, in a sense, the resistance of the channel is going to be basically decreasing, right? And this is actually shown in the plot in the bottom. So here, imagine that VG3 is greater than VG2 is greater than VG1. So these are three different numbers that I, ch that I have actually applied to the gate voltage uh, the voltage source that is connected to the gate of my transistor, right? So you can see that as I increase the gate voltage, I'm going to have lower and lower resistance. So I'm going to have a line that is that, that that has a higher and higher slope because, well, the slope of the line is 1 over that resistance. Now let's take a look at what happens if I change some structural parameters of my transistors and how do they affect the value of the resistance. First thing is the channel length. So you can see that here I have a channel length L1, and here is L2, and L2 is greater than L1. And you can you can imagine that well, L is the distance or the, the distance that the carriers have have to travel from drain to source, right? So if you look at this picture here, L is the, the, the distance from source to drain or from drain to source. So it's kind of like basically if you have a resistor, you know that the resistance 
r always is equal to rho l over a right so whatever structure that you have it's a independent of it being a conductor or a semiconductor you know that if i apply a voltage across this structure if this is the length if i make this length longer and longer i'm going to have more and more resistance here here is the same thing so if my channel length is actually longer i'm going to have more resistance therefore you can see that like basically this is if this is for l1 and this is for l2 and well let's say this middle line is some is for some l3 that is between l1 and l2 you can see that as i increase the channel length i'm going to have uh, more and more resistance how about the oxide thickness so this is the oxide thickness that i'm talking about the thickness of this insulator layer between the top um, metal layer or conductive plate and the um, and the semiconductor the substrate the p-type substrate uh, if i actually we talked about this that if i actually increase this thickness what happens is that i'm going to have a smaller capacitance right and i know that if if my um, if my capacitance is going to be smaller it means that for the same voltage i'm going to have i'm going to attract less charges to the channel therefore i'm going to be i'm going to have a worse capacitor so a worse transistor so you can imagine that uh, when i actually increase the uh, thickness of my oxide my resistance is going to go up so t ox goes up r on will go up same with the length so l goes up r on goes up and then we have another parameter which we call it the width of the channel or the width of the transistor or the mosfet and we show it with w and it's kind of like basically the width of that well the, the channel that we have right so you can see that like if you have a highway or a street of uh street dedicated for electrons to move from source to drain this is the width or basically yeah the width of that highway or that street so you can imagine that the wider this is the less resistance you're going to get against the movement of electrons simply uh, if you want to think of an ana analogy uh, think about a very thin pipe and a very thick pipe right so like if you have a pipe for flow for for water flow you can imagine that the the thicker the pipe is um, you're going to have less resistance against the water flow here is the same thing the wider the channel you have uh, the less resistance you're going to see against the movement of electrons that's why when you're increasing the w you're going to have less and less resistance so w goes up r on will go down making two transistors in parallel pretty much has the same effect because you can imagine that if i connect gate of two transistors together source of two transistors together and drain of two transistors together it's kind of like basically i've increased the width of the two the, the first transistor by a factor of two if the two transistors are actually identical right so you can imagine that if i make two transistors in parallel it's kind of like making two resistors in parallel it like if you have r and r in parallel the effective uh, resistance is going to be r divided by two so here's the same same idea right so if you make two transistors in parallel the resistance of the channel of each uh, of the effective transistor the total like the, the overall structure is going to be uh, less or basically half of the resistance of each of those transistors